Hello, I'm Andrew Colbert, and I'd like to speak with you today about PAH analysis at AvoMean using GCMS. Polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, or PAHs, also known as uh, polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons, are produced when organic materials undergo incomplete combustion. You find these in cooking food, burning wood, coil, coal, oil, gas, trash, any sort of combustion, uh, cigarettes. Uh, they are materials that consist of three or more benzene rings. There are more than a hundred different structural isomers. Most of them are, are colorless, white, blue, green, or yellow particle, yellow solids. They, they tend to attach to other particles. They travel on soot, particulate in the air. And some of them are pretty bad actors. Um, many of them break down to other substances. Uh, a lot of them are carcinogenic, some are mutagenic, teratogenic. Uh, some cause um, uh, immunodeficiency. Uh, they come from uh, natural disasters, such as forest fires, volcanoes, and a lot of things that we do, uh, including vehicle exhaust, industrial plants, asphalt production, aluminum manufacturing. Uh, they are persistent in the environment. They, um, they can be taken in when you drink water, breathe polluted air, uh, eating burnt food that's been on the grill too long, um, material, uh, uh, produce that is grown in contaminated soil, or using products that uh, contain carbon black or, or other materials that were burned. Let's talk a bit about regulations. The EPA has identified 16 priority pollutants of the PAHs, which are unusually bad actors, and here they are. Uh, the OSHA permissible limit is uh, 0.2 milligrams per cubic meter in, in air, um, 0.2 parts per billion of PAHs in drinking water, and um, for one of the particular uh, priority pollutants, 0.2 micrograms per liter for uh, benzoyl pyrene. So these are, are pretty low limits for, for issues. Uh, the FDA threshold regulation for carbon black is 50% by weight for reusable products that are in contact with food because of the potential of leaching out significant amounts of PAHs. And California Prop 65, of course, is something you also have to look at because anything that, anything that has uh, something carcinogenic in it gets a black box label on it. So looking at the PAHs that are listed on Prop 65 out of the, 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 the priority 16 pollutants, uh, some of these, like, ben, like uh, benzalpha anthracene, are uh, 33 nanograms per day as a carcinogen. Um, benzalpha pyrene is 60 nanograms per day. These are extreme low levels, much lower than you're used to looking at for uh, extractive and leachables uh, for um, unknown materials. These have uh, known cancer slope factors, and you have to use them in any calculation of toxicology for things that come out of rubber stoppers, for example. So let's take a look at the analytical methodology. You can use uh, immunoassay kits. Um, they have some bias. Uh, you can use optical methods, which are have, have, uh, have some specificity problems, selectivity problems. So we decided instead to go with mass spectrometry, uh, a GC mass spectrometry approach. It's uh, simple to use, has high resolution, and gives quantitative results down to parts per billion levels. There is some limited selectivity for some of the isomers, but I'll, I'll just show you what we're dealing with. Uh, here are the instrument parameters. We do uh, a sim on certain ions that uh, are, are uh, known to be from the, the, the priority 16 pollutants. And here is a tick, that is a total ion chromatogram, and, uh, of, of the priority 16 pollutants. Now, you see in here in, uh, with uh, phenanthrene and anthracene, you have a bit of a resolution problem with the, sa the same molecular weight. Many of these things have the same molecular weight, so sim isn't going to help you there. Uh, but pretty much everything is resolved to some degree. So we validated this method in general. Uh, we get low detection limits, uh, good linearity, uh, decent RSD. Uh, it is a trace analytical method. 
and here is the linearity for 16 different um, PAHs all at once and uh, low detection limits on the order of tens of parts per billion um, and you can get lower um, by your sample prep. So we looked at a number of consumer products. A rubber handle, um, Brita water filter, barbecue chocolate, briquettes, a rubber chicken as a toy, um, stoppers for serum glass vials, yoga mats which are ubiquitous, and, and rubber mulch which is used on playgrounds. And these are things that are actually in the marketplace, so you, you wouldn't think that would have any, any bad actors in them. But, uh, we found otherwise. So it's very simple to prep these. You just cut them up and you extract them in acetonitrile for four hours, dilute in methanol, and you shoot. Uh, here's a Brita water filter. Um, the uh, black line is the, the it's, not, it's not a limit of detection, obviously. It's at the limit of regulation for the things that are issues. Uh, and uh, there's not there's nothing there's nothing above the the, um, the threshold for the water filter, but there are still some uh, some peaks that are uh, are PAHs. Looking at barbecue charcoal, there are some things that are above the limit. The rubber chicken actually has something as well, um, which is a problem for a toy because it tends to end up in children's mouths. And here's the black rubber mulch that uh, resulted in a class action lawsuit. Uh, by some uh, some parents. Because this is being used, is still being used in playgrounds, in school playgrounds, uh, to prevent kids from getting hurt too badly when they fall down. But they, they get they get all of this in the, on their hands and uh, there's there are very high levels of uh, polynuclear aromatic hydrocarbons in, uh, in this rubber mulch um, because it's just filled with carbon black and then they put their fingers in their mouths, they eat food and so this is a serious issue. The blue yoga mat had a significant number of interferences, but it also has high levels of, of PAHs. So of these consumer products, there were just a number of things which we had, uh, we had potential issues with. In conclusion, uh, PAHs can be found in a wide variety of consumer products. They tend to have persistence in our soil and water, so you need to be able to watch out for them and monitor, and uh, you need a fast and reliable analytical method to test suspect products. And here are some references that uh, you can look up for more information on the regulations. Thank you for your attention.